Hi guys, welcome back to the shed. Um, again, in this video we're back onto the mini caterham and uh, getting more done to that. So in this video we're going to be looking at making the suspension arms or the wishbones, whichever you prefer to call them. And uh, what I propose to do is to make them out of 8mm thick aluminium plate. Um, and again, um, the book I have details the dimensions for these parts for the full size model. But of course this is a scale model, so I've scaled down those critical dimensions to suit the to suit the chassis anyway so what i need to do is there's holes to drill through the thickness of that material and then we've got the profile of the plate of the wishbone or suspension arm to mill out just talk you through some of the other parts that we're going to be using So here I have some um, really small rod end connectors. These are a male connector, they've got a male thread on it. Um, and this is an M3 connector. And I'll uh, stick a link in the description to where I got these from. So I've had to get six for this project. There's two on the front corners, so four up front, and then two on the rear upper arms so six of them all together I'll be bolting the suspension arms in place to the bracketry uh, using these M3 bolts caphead screws uh, with a nylock nut on there now at the moment I'm just gonna snug them up um, once I get to a position where I'm, I think I'm not going to be taking it apart anymore, I'll probably lock tight these into position. But at the moment I'm going to save that because no doubt um, there's a high chance that these are going to be undone again in the future. So we'll get on with it. We'll uh, get these parts in the milling machine and get the holes drilled and we'll machine those profiles in and then get them bolted in position on the chassis. So what I've done is I've got my machine vise set up. I've indicated this end of the jaws and that face. So that's where my zero is set up on that corner. And I've centered my drill in the position where I'm going to be drilling all of the suspension arms. So all I need to do now is just using a straight edge, push them against that edge and tighten it up. And then we can we can drill it. So I've got the holes drilled now, the three mil holes in those bits of aluminium. So the next thing to do is to mill the shape of the suspension arms. Now they all have a angle on each side um, which ranges from 12 mil to 26 mil. Um, some of them have a different angle on each side. So what I've done is, I've got a bit of 25mm steel, I've bolted that down to the bed. 
My plan is to to drill a series of holes um, using these the X and Y on the DRO. Drill and tap them, and then put a cap head screw in there. And then what that will do is it will give me two reference points that if I put a flat edge of the bit of aluminium up to the cap head screws as like a fence, that will set the angle that I'm going to cut along that back edge there. So I've got five holes to drill in this. I'll probably drill a couple more actually just so I've got some to use to clamp clamp the parts down um, and also I might put a couple of extra holes in so I've got a square fence um, so I can reduce the length on a square cut. So I'll do that now. Do these holes I'm thinking M6 um, so I'll get that sorted. Okay, so that's our fixture plate drilled and tapped now. What I'll do is I'll just explain to you the idea behind this. So there will always be a cap head screw in this position. This is our zero zero position. So here we have four optional bolt positions and the idea is um, these are four different angles or different spacings. Um, for the different the different angles we need to cut, cut on the suspension arms so the idea is that I can then put a part against the two screws like that I can then cut in the direction of that axis to get the right angle and I can flip it over and cut again um, looking at it now I'll probably do need another hole around here somewhere just so I can clamp that down without it obstructing the path of the cut. So I've put that extra hole in there now, drilled and tapped it uh, just for the clamp to uh, bolt down to. I've got my first bit of material in there to cut and uh, I don't know if you can see on there but uh, in this corner I've just marked a back mark and the idea is I'm going to keep cutting this angle until the cut intersects that back mark there and then that will be that angle finished. We'll flip it over and uh, we'll do the same until we reach the back mark. So that's the first angle cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this screw to the position just beside it there um, and then we'll get the angle on the other side cut. There's two different angles on this item so we'll get that sorted.
So to cut this end square to this back side what I've done is I've now got two of those suspension arms cut with the two angles and I've paired them up to each other and then use the two pin positions to effectively set it square. So we've got the point to take off this so we have a flat end and then we'll switch them and we'll do the same for this one. Um, all that's left to do now on the front ones and the rear upper ones is to drill and tap the holes for the rod end connectors. Uh, so that's the next thing to do. Then on the front ones we've got some machining to do for holding the front shock absorber. And uh, also we've just hacksawed out the middle of the upper front wishbones. So I'm just going to clean that out on the milling machine. So that's the wishbones complete now, I've just rubbed them down with a bit of emery paper just to clean them up. Um, I haven't took too much off because they'll probably need done again in the future. Uh, chances are that these parts will be coming off, on and off a few times so uh, there's no point getting them perfect now. I've threaded in the rod end connectors. So all that's left to do is to get these parts um, fixed to the chassis.
so that's it um, it's complete I've got the wishbones fitted to the chassis now front and back um, only issue I've found is that there's a few welds that are restricting the movement so I'll probably just use a file and remove a bit of welds just to free them up um, but apart from that that's it done in the next video we'll be putting the or making the rear uprights which will carry the rear wheels hopefully wherever you are you're staying safe in these challenging times but for now uh, thank you for watching this video um, please subscribe like and comment and I'll see you again next time Thank you.